Okay, okay. Here we go. So today we're going to talk about a fairly easy concept, but you're going to get tripped up on some of the applications because you're going to forget about it. I'll explain what, what I'm talking about as we go through this. Talking about continuity. So what are we going to do today? We're going to determine the continuity of a function, whether it is continuous or discontinuous. Talk about some properties of continuity. We can simplify some things to make determining continuity a little bit easier on us. Oh, this, is a, this is what's going to cause people problems, and that's why I capitalized it. The formal definition of continuity, not the casual definition of continuity. We'll have that also, but the formal definition of continuity is going to cause some problems. Then we're going to talk about intermediate value theorem. There is a rule in calculus. If a theorem has its own name, it's really important. Okay, we're getting two today. The formal definition of continuity and IBT. I think you've done IBT before, and it's very logical. We'll worry about it when we get to it. And then most importantly today, you should just be a better listener for your friends and family. You know what I'm saying? At least someone's listening. Thank you. Okay, here we go. Hey, um, Abby? Yeah. What's the word continuous mean? Um, never ending. Never ending. Do we like that? Um, sure. Yeah, I love it. Excellent. Hey, uh, Abby? Yeah. Do you know how that applies in a graph? Um, it's like when the lines have arrows on them, when you use it in the Okay. Just, it's like in, 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 in place, like, like Love it. So any function that you draw, as long as you put arrowheads on it, it's continuous. Well, yeah, I don't know. Yes. 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 Does everybody agree? I don't know. Can you? Yeah. Could. You want to you play on the big board? Um, Wait, but if you have a hole, it still has a piece of light. Hey, don't interrupt. <laughs> go, go up to the board. Um, that this, one? Yeah, this will be fun. <laughs> and then grab the pen off the front. Front? No, 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 no. no, 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 no. <laughs> grab my board with that and I'll let you. So I thought yeah, this was okay, like good. the same material now, as the whiteboard. Now click on the side. On this side? Uh, no, 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 not there. Don't, don't, don't mess with that. Take that go away. Many sides. Sorry. There you go. No, see, no, no, you're good. See where it says pen up there? Yep, Ooh. Yep, yep. Okay, now cool. pick a color. Okay. Um, can you then draw us a function that contradicts what Abby said? Sorry, the hole's a little large, but, you know. Locked out a whole neighborhood. Oh, now May wants to argue. I want to argue because since we learned about limits, can't you get like infinitely like close to that hole so that technically it will still be continuous? I mean, but there's no value exactly at that hole though, right? I guess. Okay, but that's not how it works, right? Because like the turtle's not actually going to outrun you if you're like, you know that metaphor. What? <laughs> no, no, you know, okay, listen. You know, even biology, no, no, this is no, no. You know the thing where it's like, oh, yeah, but in order to get to the finish line, you have to cross, like, one foot, but in order to get there, you have to cross six inches, and then three inches, and it's like, yeah, you can get into really close, but you're going to get there, like, you know, so, like, no, it's not continuous. I disagree. Uh, huh. So, May, are you saying that he's wrong? Oh, no, I don't. So, you're, you think that is a continuous function? It just no. like stops at this exact point, though. That's why I'm thinking like, it's not continuous. No, I might be just happen to draw the hole so very, very large. Yeah. It's still continuous. Um, you're you're gonna reach the hole eventually. No, you're not. No. Wow. Well, it's infinitely small. Hmm. So, Abby, let's go back to you since you started this mess. Do you agree that that function is discontinuous, or do you think because it's got arrowheads, it's continuous? No, I think it's discontinuous. So you've changed your mind. I have. Okay. Um, so, uh, Abby, back to you. Would you? Don't give me that book. How, uh, you, Duncan, you sit down. Uh, click on the pen again. Mm -hmm. There you go. Now click where it says pen. 
Yeah. Good. Now stick that on the front of the board where you got it. It's got the little pen shape. Oh, oh man, that's cool. Okay, let's give it up. Okay, Abby, back to you. Could you revise your definition of continuous as it applies to graphs? I agree with the fact that maybe we want some arrowheads. How else do you want to take that into account? Oh, hold on. No, Did you have a brainstorm? No. Well, you were just mumbling to yourself? Yeah. Okay, I understand. What do you got? Uh, no domain. Like it has an infinite domain. Or end range. And range? Yeah. Huh. Infinite domain and infinite range. And or. Yeah. And, and or. And or. <laughs> so a horizontal line? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any other ideas? There's a, yeah. there's a Y value for every X value. Just one. Okay. Is it possible that you're overthinking this? Okay. If I ask Maeve to go to the board and draw an infinite, uh, sorry, draw a continuous function, what would you do? A line. A line. So a line would be continuous. Yeah. Why? Because there's no, like, I mean, there's no holes. There's no holes. There's no, what else is going to cause a problem? Well, there's no, like, Asymptotes would cause a problem. Sharp turn. Like a but like an absolute value. Yeah. That, that would be no, but that's not continuous. Wait, oh, wait, no, wait. Oh, 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 I don't know. I don't know. I didn't mind the actual cover the negative. Um, why? It's it would continue to be forever, but it just wouldn't encapsulate everything. But do we have to encapsulate everything on the graph? I don't know. I don't know. That's what we're trying to figure out. I don't know. Oh, no? Like so what about a parabola? Is a parabola continuous? Yeah. I just yeah. Said. As long as it has no holes. No holes, no asymptotes. But it doesn't cover all the whys. Yeah. Or we it's still continuous. It's continuous. Yeah. yeah. Okay? But it would go on for as far as it, like, all the it would go on forever just only in a certain direction. Interesting. Daniel, can you grab a pen, please? Your turn at the board. <laughs> Don't look so happy. <coughs> go over the board. Click on the pen thing. Yep, choose color. You didn't choose white, did you? No, just black. All right, good. Can you draw us a continuous function, please? Now, hold on. Before you just draw a line or a parabola, I'm giving you free reign. Get kind of crazy here. Draw something that's a little... <laughs> okay. Is that a continuous function? Yes. Why? It has no holes. No holes. No holes. No holes. No holes. No uh, the arrows. That's a big one. Okay. Let's give it up for Daniel. Thank you. Okay. Is it a function that you can draw without like lifting your pen? You know, like abrupt changes in values. Let's so say that first one again. You can draw without lifting your pen. Like, <laughs> <laughs> okay, go draw or an example. Pencil or crayon or spray paint. Yeah, but go draw an example. Writing utensil, if you will. Right. Okay, oh, he's up. <laughs> Four hundred. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! That whole thing is a continuous function. No, it's discontinuous because I had to lift my pen. It had like an. <laughs> This is not continuous. Gotcha. What about the rest of it? What do you mean? I mean, other than that, that little 
No, like this is a function, but it's not it continuous. Yes. It's not continuous. It is discontinuous. But it would these continue these from are that from that point Wait, forward. No, no. So it's not discontinuous everywhere. It's just discontinuous at that one little yeah, spot. Yeah. So it would continue to go forward and continue to go backward, but it wouldn't continue. What? I didn't want to get that grass. Oh, I was just looking for exactly what Nathan said. If you can draw the picture without picking up your pen or pencil, you're good to go. Okay. If if you remember that simple idea, that's going to help you understand continuity. So okay. So if there's a hole in it, like it's still. It is discontinuous. Duncan was not able to draw the blue without pick without picking up his pencil. Well, I can do this. this. And this. Yeah, but that's yeah. cheating. That's cheating because that little circle thing just represents the hole. There's actually we're using that circle to represent the hole, but we're actually going er, and then jumping over it. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Good. So the problems then we um, we pretty much pounded that hole into the ground. That if it's a hole, it's discontinuous. Um, Nathan, what do you got there? What would you call that thing? Piecewise, Piecewise functions can be discontinuous. And then what was the other one we mentioned? Asymptotes. Right? Beautiful. You've done half the lesson already. Yeah. Does it have to have the arrow at the end of the like a line like the way Holy guacamole. Everybody hear that question? What? Oh. Hold on, I can only have my head explode once at a time. What if the air what if Daniel erased the arrowheads from his picture? Is that thing still continuous? No. When? We wouldn't know if it continues or not. Didn't he draw it without picking up his pen? Right. So you're saying we need the arrowheads? Yeah. Yes. Huh. They're highly recommended. They're highly recommended. But then yeah. the circle isn't a function. Oh. But I got one that might. Oh, hold on. Let's move on, Joe. All right. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. No interruptions in the graph of f at c, where c is some number. Not only is c some number, it's any number on the function. Can you trace the graph without picking up your pencil? Are there any holes, jumps, or gaps? And those are the three things that are going to cause problems for us. Now, it can't be that easy. We've got to get more specific. And here it is, the formal definition of continuity. Three parts. So what I'm going to do is give you a brief overview of this. And then I'm going to show you some examples of when it doesn't work. Okay. So number one. F of A is defined, I know you can read, I'm not going to read it to you, but in red, the function's got to be defined at all the points. The whole is not defined at the point. Okay. Number two, has to be a limit at all points. The whole is okay, it's got a limit, but it's not defined. And then number three, which is the hard one, the, vet, the answer for part one and the answer for part two have to be the same number. Now, this is going to seem like gobbledygook until you see this in action. So be patient. Okay, we good? All right. So here's our first discontinuity. The technical term is a removable discontinuity because we've removed part of the graph, also known as a whole. So let's talk about why this violates the formal definition of continuity. Oh, by the way, as soon as you violate any one of those three, you're done. It's discontinuous. Or it is not continuous. 
So a hole is going to create a problem because it is not defined at all the values. Does it have a limit everywhere? Is there a limit at x equals 1? Uh, yeah, right. yeah, what is it? Two. It's 2. Good. But since we already violated step 1, we're done. Let's change it a little bit. What if I did that? Is the function defined everywhere? Yeah. Yes. In other words, this might cause some problems. What's f of 1? Three. 3. Good. We already did this. What's the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x? 2. two. Pro part 1 is good. It's defined everywhere. Part 2 is good. It has a limit. Now part 3 kicks in. The answer to part 1 and part 2 do not match. Answer 1 does not match answer 2. Done. Discontinuous. Okay. Sometimes it'll have just a plain old hole, but sometimes they'll get all fancies in their fancies and put a point at that location off the ground. Questions about that? So we're going to deal with informal and formal applications here. So there will be sometimes where I'll just say, is this graph continuous? And you'll say, no. Well, why not? Because there's a hole in it or there's a removable discontinuity. Other times I will say, use the formal definition of continuity to determine if this function is continuous. And you go through your three steps. Are we good to go? Okay. Next one. Jump. Discontinuity. As Nathan said, piecewise function. Okay, so let's go through it again using the formal definition. Is this function, well, first of all, you're going to look at the graph and figure out where is there a funky point. And I think you can all realize that we're going to have a funky point here at negative 2. So that's what we're going to focus on to test whether it's discontinuous. I assume that you recognize that those two rays are going to be continuous going on and on forever. Okay, part one. What's f of negative two? Two. two. What's the limit as x approaches negative two of this function? Does not exist. Good, DNE. Left hand limit does not match right hand limit. We're done. I'm not even going to talk about three because I don't have to. It has no limit. We're done. Okay. Number three. Infinite discontinuity, also known as an asymptote, a vertical asymptote. Which one of the three things does this violate? not fully defined. Good. Is that it? Just number one? I mean, number two as well. Good. Because? Because the, the limit doesn't exist. There's no limit. Yeah. And therefore? Uh, number three. Yeah, this one's the grand slam. It's all three of them are violated. It's not defined. There's no limit. And the limit and the value aren't the same. this a fairly easy concept? When you attack the continuity problems, the first thing you should ask yourself when you're looking at a graph, could I recreate this graph without picking up my pencil? If the answer is yes, then it's continuous. We're good? All right. Now, what happens if we've got something like this? 
Is that a continuous function? No. May you say yes or no? No, why not? Do you all agree? Yeah? All right. Well, let's poke the bear. Can I draw that without picking on my pencil? Ooh. We seem to have a contradiction. Are there any funky points there? Satisfied. Is that function defined everywhere on the interval? Yes. Okay, good. Does it have a limit everywhere? Does it have a limit everywhere? Jessica, are you shaking your head no? But wait a second. What's the first step in solving a limit? Plug and chug, right? If I plug two into the function, don't I get an answer? Just to make sure we're all clear, what's the answer? Zero. Zero. Good. So then, doesn't it have a limit? But it can't come from the, the right side. Holy smokes! It seems to be a contradiction. Yes. Yes. Is everybody following the argument here? We know that the left-hand limit has to match the right-hand limit in order for there to be a limit at that point. However, you can't, as May said, you can't come from the right at negative 2, I'm sorry, from the left at negative 2, from the right at 2, because there's nothing there. But we also know that there's a value of the function at 2, because you can plug 2 into it, and there's a value of 0. How do you deal with that? Well, let's go back to the original question. Is that a continuous function? Well, first of all, is that a function? Yes. Yeah, okay, good. Good. Why? Keep it simple. Bingo. Passes the vertical line test. We're good to go. It's a function. So we agree it's a function. And do we all agree it's continuous? I mean, by definition, What's that? By definition, I feel like it, it shouldn't. It's not. I mean, it is, but I feel like it's not. No, if, if the definition is... Oh, okay, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Let me stop you for one second. Let's take the informal approach again. By using our informal approach, is it continuous? Yes. Yes. Good. Now you want to talk about that? We'll get more formal. Go ahead. Well, yeah. No, by like definition, like the meaning of the of the. The Not meaning like of the continuous. Word. Yeah. Okay. But I feel like it just shouldn't be. Because I feel like there's some exceptions. Well, no, no, if the definition is it follows those rules for every value of the domain, then yes. I don't really. Know. Yeah. Yeah. Like it has to be for every value, then no, it doesn't have to be for every value. Whereas like this other one's did. It just depends on what, what you really mean. But so what you really mean is that it doesn't cover the entire domain. The, the domain is not negative infinity. Yes. Okay. But if that's not necessary, it's Don't worry, I'm Instead of continuing to ask the question, I will answer this. Yes, that is a function. Yes, that is continuous. However, the endpoints do create kind of a paradox here. Because if I ask you, what is the limit as x approaches negative 2 from the positive side, like it says up there, you would tell me 0. What happens if I approach negative 2 from the left? What would you tell me? It does not exist because there's nothing there. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it would seem that at negative 2, there's no limit. But we have a limit there. 
This is what's called a one-sided limit. And a one-sided limit will sometimes violate rules because there's no function to other side. The good thing about this is they don't happen very frequently. Most commonly, they happen with square root functions, semicircles, or the square root of x function. Pretty much everything we de everything else we deal with is going to have arrowheads on it, and so we're good to go. But again, if you get bound up in all these ideas, try to keep it simple. Go back to the basic definitions, the informal definitions. I can draw that semicircle without picking up my pencil. Therefore, it is continuous on that interval. This we already knew. Left hand limit has to match right hand limit. Quick review there. This is really important. Okay. Now, to make your life a lot easier, we're gonna, I'm going to throw this out. It pretty much, like it says in red, if you add, subtract, or multiply, or divide continuous functions, it stays continuous. Add two continuous functions, the sum is continuous. Subtract two continuous functions, it's continuous, etc., etc., etc. Multiply by a constant, number three, you still have a continuous function. The same is true, well, yeah, I'll come back to this in a second because that's kind of important. The same is true with composite functions. You put a composite function, sorry, you put a continuous function inside a continuous function, it stays continuous. Okay, now let's go back to this slide. You are going to be commonly asked before you attack certain problems, whether or not the function is continuous. This will save you a lot of hassles. All polynomials are continuous, like it says up there. It's so important I made it dance. Whoops, I made it dance. I know nope, it's not. Come on, let's go. Where are we doing? There it is. Okay? But the question is, what's polynomial? That I also made dance. Sorry, that wasn't a rhetorical question. What's a polynomial? A math term. Thank you. That was very helpful. <laughs> Are you picking up on the sarcasm? No. Good, because I'm laying that on pretty thin. Anybody else? I'll give you a bonus question. What isn't a polynomial? I didn't hear what you said. A binomial. A binomial. It is a word, actually. Binomial. Bi meaning two. Nomial meaning numbers. terms or numbers, yes. Yeah. X minus two times X plus three is a binomial. It's a binomial made up from two binomials. It is actually a polynomial. What is not a polynomial? May. Uh, four. <laughs> four is actually a polynomial. It's 4x raised to the zero power. Daniel, are you going to give us another smart aleck answer? Are you going to give me a legitimate try? A legitimate try. All right, go. Imaginary numbers? No, they do not count. <laughs> We don't deal with imaginary numbers. We're all real numbers. Anybody else? Zero is a polynomial. Zero x to the third power. Oh, just zero times. Yeah. Alright. Wait, negative Uh, Be more specific. Where's that negative sign? X raised to a negative number is not a polynomial. Very good. 1 over X is not a polynomial. I know you know what one is. Probably nobody ever asked you to define what a polynomial is, or when they did ask you that you said many terms, many numbers, because you know your poly and your nomials. 
for our purposes, any function that has integral, sorry, integer exponents, they're what you think. Linear terms, constants, quadratics, cubics, quartics, quintics, hexics, septics, octics, etc., etc., etc. What isn't a polynomial? Rational functions, reciprocal functions, negative exponents, that kind of stuff. Square roots. So you will be asked before attacking a problem, well, I should say, in order to attack a problem, you're going to need to make sure that that problem is continuous, and that comes about from recognizing that it's polynomial. Pregunta. Can you say one more time with the polynomial? Uh, it's an expression where all the exponents are positive integers. Which you commonly know is linear, quadratic, cubic, quartic. What's a rational function? It's like the one with like, uh, like the x root. minus one over x squared plus three. It's like the one with the function over function. function. Okay. Yeah. That's where you get those funky, you know, right. okay. vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes. Yeah, we don't play with this. Hopefully, it's not. I don't like that. No. Okay. Mm -hmm. It is sometimes easier to talk about where a function is discontinuous versus where it's continuous. So even though the problem says, where is the tangent function continuous, the tangent funct function is continuous everywhere except at those pesky little asymptotes. Where are those pesky little asymptotes? Say a lot, say a problem. And how many how many asymptotes are there for the tangent function? How many? There's infinite. So we have to figure out how to express that. How do I write that? That means May. Uh, vertical asymptote is x equals pi plus pi k. Pi plus pi k? No, I'm sorry, that's incorrect. That's what we did. No. You're close. Not pi k. Pi over 2 plus? No. Plus pi k. So pick one. Negative pi over 2, pi over 2, 3 pi over, doesn't matter which one you pick, and then stick a pi k on it. Now remember when we were talking about the one the other day, we were adding 2 pi to it, because I think we were doing a sine or cos, something like that. Cosine, thank you. Tangent, it has a period of only pi, so you're going to pi k to it. Now that line that I have there that says negative 3, uh, negative 3 pi over 2 comma negative pi over 2 is where it is continuous, but I would go with the fact of where it's discontinuous. You know, no question. You would write, here I'll write. So you pick one of the asymptotes as a starting point. So I would say pi over 2. And then you have to represent the addition of an infinite number of those. So what I would do is go from pi over 2, and I would move over pi, and then move over pi again. And so you would add pi k, where k is some integer value. Okay? That's a nice, clean way of, of infinitely representing all those asymptotes versus doing all those intervals. Do something really easy here. Posey, when you were born, do you know how big you were? Can you guesstimate? How how long were you? How big were you? Not how much did you weigh? I don't know. How big is a baby when they're born? Twenty inches? Okay, so what 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 is that? Twenty inches? Sure. Okay, for discussion purposes, let's say you were twenty inches. How tall are you now? 
510, beautiful. Okay, so, and you're how old? 16, beautiful. Posey's 16 years old. She came into this world at 20 inches. She's now 5'10". Posey, how old were you when you were three feet tall? <laughs> I don't need an exact day. Give me an approximate value. Is this a math question? Or well, I'm getting, to, I'm getting to it, yeah. I mean, it does involve numbers. I'm trying to illustrate a point. Five years old. <laughs> okay, it's five years old. Great. And uh, uh, Posey, how old were you when you hit five feet tall? <laughs> seven years old? That's a pretty seven year old. You see a five foot seven year old coming at you, you better head the other way. Okay, so here let me let me simplify this. Let me illustrate my point. If I gave you any height between twenty inches and what five ten? Yeah. Five ten, could you give me a time in your life when you were that height? Yeah. Is there any height in that domain that you never were? Um, no. Are we all good on that? Yes. Does that seem like a fairly simple concept? Uh -huh. yeah, right? Posey did not jump from 20 inches tall to 5 feet instantly. She's covered all those heights from birth to now. In other words, well, you tell me. How would you phrase that mathematically? There's no holes. Therefore, her growth is continuous. Beautiful. Does that make sense? Okay. So, what the intermediate value theorem says, if we know where we start and we know where we end, we have to cross every value in the possibility or in the domain, let's put it that way. If Posey started at 20 inches and she's now 5'10", she had to be every single height between those two heights at some point in time. Now the thing that gets weird when we make these functions is you could have more than one value, but that would well, actually, for me, that would, let's use me as an example. When I was born, let's say I, w I was bigger than Posey. I was 24 inches when I was born. I am currently 6'2". However, at one point in my life, I was 6'3". I'm shrinking. Does that still meet the intermediate? That happens when you get older. It's called gravity. Um, does that still satisfy the intermediate value theorem? Yes. 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 Except the difference with me is that because I've shrunk, I've hit two different two different times. I've hit six two. I hit six two growing, and I'm hitting six two now that I shrink. So the point being, you can hit points more than once. It just doesn't make any sense when we look at Posey's growth, because I'm assuming you haven't started shrinking yet, have you, Posey? No. No. Yeah. Good. Make sense? Now, how do we apply that to a graph? It's real simple. If you know a function is continuous, you start at a point, you end at a point, you got to hit every point in between. So in the um, little rectangle look at thing is all the fancy schmancy calculus speak. But I think remembering mine and Posey's growth will help you understand the idea better. I start at one and I end at five. Somewhere along the line, I got to cross three at least once. Yeah. Now, here's where the snafu comes in. It has to be continuous. That's called the hypothesis of the statement. If the function is continuous, then all of this other gunk applies. If it's not continuous, it doesn't make any sense. 
So you're going to be asked in an IDT problem to do a bunch of work, and the first thing you're going to have to do is establish if it's continuous. And that polynomial, this is where the polynomial thing comes into play. You've done this already in some form or another. It's most commonly used to find, uh, we talked about that already, to find zeros for a function. I'm wondering, does that function cross the x-axis? In other words, does it have any zeros? I'm going to use the interval of 0 to 1. And in fact, I'll tell you ahead of time, it does cross the x-axis. I'm going to do this without actually finding where it crosses. I'm just going to prove that it must cross. And it's real simple. I just need to know what f of 0 is, and I need to know what f of 1 is. So go ahead, calculate those quickly, please. What's f of 0? Negative 1. What's f of 1? 2. Is the function continuous? Yes. Why? No. There we go. f of x is continuous because... Uh, f of x is a polynomial. Good. Now we've satisfied the hypothesis of it, so we can go on and use the intermediate value theorem. If f of 0 is negative 1 and f of 1 is 2, that means it's somewhere in that interval. It's got to cross the x-axis. For those of you that are visual learners, what I'm talking about is... If I start down here at negative 1 and I end up here at 2, where did my dot go? Can I get from the first blue dot to the second blue dot without crossing the x-axis? No. Impossible. So therefore, it must cross at least once. Okay, now that at least once thing is important because, where did my pen go? It's over here. It could very well do this. That's okay, but it's got to cross at least once. Then the next step would be to figure out where it crosses, and that would be just setting it equal to zero and solving, which we're not going to do. We don't care about that. It doesn't have to always cross the x-axis. It could cross any y value. But the problem is approached the same way. You need to know the starting value. You need to know the ending value. And if those two things have the value that you're looking for in between, then we're good to go. Because one is negative and the other one is positive. It's got to go from 0 at some point. OK, good. There's all the work I did that already. We're done. Mm -hmm.